Well, there you have it. Some of you will be watching on Facebook, uh, and some of you will be coming on from the YouTube premiere in just about one second. There we go. Uh, the YouTube premiere has kicked over into this, the Q&A with, uh, with me, Topher Field, the director of Battleground Melbourne. Now I'm going to wait for a few more people to join, and then I'm going to deal with the elephant in the room, that audio mix. That's my fault. And uh, I will tell you how that came about and what we're going to do to fix it. I apologize. That music mix was not what it should have been. Uh, again, my fault. I'm the director. Everything is in the end. Everything's on me. And I will wear that one. But we will fix it and we will re-release it with the audio adjusted so that it is absolutely perfect. I'll tell you all about the process, how we ended up um, <laughs> yeah, with audio that I have never heard before. That was the first time I had heard that audio mix. Now, that's not anyone else's fault but my own. I'm the director. Everything is on me. Uh, but I'll tell you about the process and how we got there. But uh, we will fix it. We will re-release it. And that audio will be fixed and as good as my composer deserves it to be. My audio master has done a fantastic job. He had to really, like, seriously, I, I, look, I'll go through the details in a minute. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. But firstly, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching and being a part of Battleground Melbourne. My name is Topher Field. I had the pleasure of being the director of Battleground Melbourne and telling the story of some of the most amazing and courageous people that I've ever met who I am delighted to say many of whom have become my friends over the last little while because we've gotten to know each other through this movement and by God, some of these people are incredible and it is my privilege, my privilege to be able to tell their story and to be able to share the last two years. For those of you that found this documentary triggering, uh, I'm sorry, but that was necessary. The last two years has been incredibly intense, incredibly intense. I wrestled often with, look, the phrase PTSD is too strong, okay? It's not, it's not that. I'm not trying to be disrespectful to people with actual PTSD, but... I don't know. I, I I'm an emotional guy, right? I'm I'm very close to my own emotions, and I was there at a lot of the events that are depicted in this doco, and making this doco was freaking hard sometimes. Um, and I'm sure watching the doco for a lot of you has been has been just the same. So I'm sorry that um, for anyone that that has found that this has brought up some really uncomfortable stuff. I'm sorry. My hope is that with the message of hope that comes with this documentary, the hope and faith in each other and, and in your fellow Victorian, my hope is that this can be a step towards healing, a step towards overcoming some of that uh, and perhaps finding a way to move on and to channel that energy and to channel that hurt into a productive direction. That's, that's my hope for all of this. Um, so this is more than 2000 people watching. Uh, there were most of the time through that documentary, there were 7,000 plus people watching the documentary. I'm so grateful to all of you. Thank you. I do want to start by addressing the elephant in the room, and then I will jump into a bunch of the questions that are coming through in the comments and the chat right now. This is a and I I am going to endeavor to answer your questions, to talk to you and, uh, yeah, happy to, happy to whatever good comments, bad comments, constructive criticism, trolls, whatever. You're all welcome here. You all feed the algorithm, even the trolls. And there were plenty of those. So thank you guys. Thanks for hanging around. Um, but I want to start by addressing the elephant in the room. I got the audio mix wrong. I'm the director. I'm responsible for everything. It's on me. It's not on my audio guy. It's not on anyone else. It's on me. I got that wrong. I apologize. What we're going to do about this in terms of the music. So depending on what type of sound system or what type of TV you were listening on, it might have been okay, or it might have seemed like the music was just too loud, just too strong. And that was certainly the case for me listening on my TV. When you listen on studio speakers, it sounds different. When you listen on a TV, it sounds different. When you listen on a phone, it sounds different. When you listen on headphones, it sounds different. And I got the mix wrong. 
Now, the way, it, the way it played out is this, and this is not to apportion blame to anyone but myself. I'm the director. But the sequence of events was this. We ran late in the edit. The edit proved to be a monstrous effort. Again, that's on me, not my editors. That's on me. We ran late. And when I handed it over to my audio master, so the audio guy that does all that balancing and, and gets all the levels right and does all that stuff, he can't do that until the edit is finished. Because you've got to hand him an audio file with all the individual little files for him to play with that can't change. Because if you start changing that, you're going to you're going to end up in a world of hurt, right? So we ran late finishing the edit, or I ran late finishing the edit, and I handed that audio file to my audio guy with just about half as many days as what he had said he wanted and he needed to be able to do the project. So he had half the time, and his deadline was Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning, I was then going to be able to listen to it, give him feedback, give him changes. Uh, and then by Wednesday, we would have the finished audio file with, excuse me, with any changes. And then on Thursday, on, on Wednesday night, we would then get that file and we would render it out with the vision because the rendering takes a couple of hours. The uploading can take quite a long time because it's a 15 gigabyte file. So we needed to have the finished audio the first round by Tuesday for the final round by Wednesday. Realistically, that wasn't possible because we ran late with the edit. And my audio guy didn't have enough time. So on Tuesday, he said, listen, I need more time. That became Wednesday. And Wednesday became Thursday. And we didn't get the audio file until this afternoon. That is not my audio guy's fault. That's mine. I ran late. And as a result, I never got to review the audio. When we got that file, we had to drop it straight in and start the render. In order to have any chance of having it uploaded onto YouTube and ready to go for tonight, I literally didn't even listen to it. I had to just drop it in. And that's not to apportion blame to anybody else. The, the, the lack of time that he had and the lack of revision, that's on me. Um, and because of that, that's why you've ended up with a show tonight where the audio was too loud. The, the music, excuse me, the music specifically was too loud. So I apologize. My composer did a great job. My audio mixer did the best job that he could with half the number of days that he should have had and that he needed for this project. And they both did an amazing job. The big lesson for me is around deadlines. I set a really ambitious deadline for this. Originally, if you remember, if you've been with this project the whole way along, you'll remember my first target was the 20th of December. In hindsight, that was freaking ridiculous. That was ridiculous. And I was wrong to set that deadline. I, I've never done a feature before. This is my first ever feature length production, hour and a 45 minute long, hour and a half plus production feature length. Everything else I've done has been 10 minutes, 15 minutes, that sort of thing. And I don't think I respected as much as I should have the sheer amount of work involved. I've had an amazing team. I've been blessed with an incredible team throughout this process. I had budget, thanks to you guys. I had budget to build an amazing team. What I didn't give them was enough time. And that's where this audio problem came in. So we're going to fix it. We're going to re-release it because I think you'll agree that everything else is pretty good. The story is tight. The editing's fantastic. The color gray, I mean, it looks so good. The cinematography, my cinematographer in that studio with the set that we built, damn, fantastic. We just stumbled at that final hurdle. So now we're going to fix that. We're going to re-release it. So what? Here's, here's my plan. Here's my plan. And this is, I've literally had to come up with this tonight because listening to it on the TV at the same time as you was the first time I realized that we had this problem for all the reasons I just went through. So um, the YouTube one is going to stay the same, exactly how it is. Um, and that's simply because the, the link is out there now and it's going to start going viral and people are going to be sharing it and that sort of thing. And I'd encourage you to share it. What we're going to do is we're going to remaster the audio and that's what will go up on Rumble, on Getter, on every other platform that we can put it onto is a remastered version where the audio is being corrected. That's what's going to go everywhere else. And that gives everyone a good reason to share that link as well. So share the YouTube one now. Let's get that going. Let's get that out there. Uh, and then in a couple of days time, that the remastered version, the remastered audio version is going to go up online and we will ask you to then start sharing that one as well. And let's just see how far we can make this go. Let's see how many views we can get. Let's see how much attention we can draw. Let's see how much flack we can draw. This is the test, right? So all these trolls that are on here, I, I can see the, the, the comments are scrolling through to a million miles an hour, but I, I catch a few of them. I, I can see there's trolls in there, right? And I love this. This is fantastic. You know the expression, if you're copying flack, it means you're over the target, right? The amount of flack that I've started copying in the last two weeks has really amped up again. Now, I copped a lot of flack early in the whole coronavirus thing. When I spoke at Anzac Day 2020, I copped heaps of flack, right? But it really died away, and it's suddenly amped up again in the last two weeks. I'm like, yes, 
Fantastic. This is this is a really, really good sign. Apparently, I haven't seen it, but apparently someone's done a takedown video on me and there's people doing posts about me and there's all kinds of stuff out there uh, trying to attack me, which is brilliant. I love it. And, uh, and I'm very, very grateful for all of the noise that goes on because it just draws attention to this, Battleground Melbourne, right? That's, that's what this is all about, is trying to draw attention to this documentary and making sure that as many people as possible see it. And haters and trolls are some of my best marketers. What they don't realize is when they get in there and they comment and they say they're a little spiteful whatever, as a result, the algorithm goes, oh, look, this is popular. There's lots of people commenting here. And it literally feeds that piece of content to their friends. Whoever's on their friends list starts to get fed content because they commented on it. They are literally a gateway giving me access to their friends list. And they don't realize that, um, but it's brilliant. So fantastic. Please feed the trolls. Please feed the trolls on, on my behalf. Please make sure they stick around and they keep commenting and they keep spouting their nonsense. It's absolutely the best thing that they could possibly be doing for me. But the flack has really amped up in the last couple of weeks. And that makes me think that I must be onto something here. There must be something about this that has the haters and the trolls nervous. Let me, this is, I, I, don't, I don't know a good way to say this. So let me say it a bad way. And hopefully in the process, I'll be able to improve my language around this. When someone chooses to make the focus of their life attacking somebody else, reducing the effectiveness of somebody else, what they've done is made their own, um, actually, I'm going to grab this comment here. Oh, sorry. Well, no, I'm not because it just scrolled through. There we go. I'm, I'm going to talk about that in just a second, Michelle. Uh, absolutely. There are captions coming. There are captions coming and I apologize. Um, the last week of my life has been hell. I'm not going to go into the details. I'm not asking for sympathy, but there are things that I wanted to get done and I was committed to getting done that just, just couldn't get done. And I'm sorry, but we will fix that and we will get that done. Um, so people who make it the purpose of their life to tear other people down, it's really interesting to me, the psychology of that. What they're basically doing is making their life and their value as a human being, in a sense, a subset of the other person that they're attacking. If they can knock a little bit off the effectiveness of that person, the voice, the reach that that person has. They go, ah, see, I'm, I've done something good for the world. Well, hang on. Why don't you instead invest your energy into actually just going out there and changing the world in the way that you believe is right? Why are you investing your energy into tearing down some other person who's changing the world? And in the process, aren't you just making yourself subservient, like a subset? Your, your value, your, your effectiveness in life will only ever be a subset of theirs. That seems a really small way to be thinking. Get out there. Make a difference. Change the world yourself. How about, how about that? How about we do that? So I always actually feel a little bit sorry about the haters and, and the trolls that come on here. I go, guys, lift your vision a little bit. Instead of hanging around and lurking in the shadows trying to reduce what I do, how about you just get off your fucking ass and go and do something yourself? Right, but anyway, that's that's um, that's lost on them. So, uh, Michelle, you're absolutely right, and I I I owe you an apology. Closed captions was absolutely a part of the plan here, including multiple translations. Boy, oh boy, things have not gone to plan <sighs> behind the scenes. Um, time wise, I haven't slept properly in two weeks. That's a, a combination of nerves and the reality of the work that's needed to be done, and. I will deliver closed captions in multiple languages, but unfortunately it became impossible for me to deliver them today. And I'm sorry, your, your angry face is absolutely justified. I said to you that I was going to do that and I didn't, and I apologize. Um, unfortunately, something had to give and in the end, delivering the product uh, was more important um, than like actually just having a product. Sorry, not more important than people that, that are hearing impaired and, and, and need subtitles or, or closed captions. But I had to make a choice between delivering everything or delivering, or, you know, delivering sort of what I could deliver or delivering nothing because I was trying to deliver everything and I, I just couldn't do that. So, okay. Um, now I'm going to try and catch some um, questions here and they're moving so fast uh, that it's actually a little bit hard. So let me scroll back a little bit away from the latest sort of comments um, Rani, that's very kind. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm an artist at heart. 
And that makes me by nature very hard on myself. Uh, as most artists are, I'm sure many artists and people who are artistically inclined are watching and you understand that you are your own harshest critic. Um, there were things about tonight that, uh, that I'm unhappy with and I will fix. End of story. That's, that's the long and short of it. It's, it, there will be a version somewhere online. It won't be the YouTube one because the YouTube one's gone now. It's going to go and it's going to, going to do its thing, but we will fix the errors that persisted into that version. And we will release a, a 4k version on rumble or somewhere that will have all of that fixed. And that's just, that's how it has to be. I'm an artist. I want to see that perfect version take form and take life. Um, thank you, Sage. That's, that's very kind. Um, Sasha, uh, what's next? I don't know. My life has been consumed by this documentary. I was thinking about it from when I went public to when I released the doco, I think it was three months. I think it was in October that I announced the documentary. And in hindsight, that was foolish. There's a reason why most people spend two years working on a documentary, not three months. And I've learned that now. I understand how much work is really involved in a feature length production the timeline that I set myself was freaking ridiculous. Uh, and as a result, I haven't thought at all about the future and what's next. There's a couple of things that occur to me. The team that has come around me in this project has been phenomenal. They genuinely have been. And, 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 you know, as much as I've banged on for the last, I don't know, 10 minutes about the fact that I'm not happy with the audio mix, that's not the fault of my team. That's the fault of me and the deadlines that I set and the fact that they weren't sustainable, they weren't achievable, and that impacted the quality of the work. Imagine a situation where I'm able to raise the budget and now with what I've learned and the mistakes that I've made, I give my team the time that they need so that these mistakes don't happen. Imagine what could be created then. So that's what I'm thinking about now as I come away from, from the premiere and I go, okay, that's done. I mean, there's lots of media to do. I'm on, I'm on American radio at seven o'clock tomorrow morning, our time, um, and a, a bunch of sort of media appearances over the next week to try and get this documentary out there and get people watching it. What's next? I don't know yet. I don't know yet. There will be something. This isn't, this isn't the end of the road for me, uh, unless, of course, they throw me in a, in a cell and, and lock me away and throw away the key. Um, but hopefully there will be another project. And the beautiful thing is I have, a, I have a team now. I have people who do amazing work. I just need to lead them a little bit better. And, and with the lessons that I've learned from this project, I can do that. I'm confident that I can do that. Um, so Bob says, kudos to you and your crew. Battleground in Melbourne is everything I expected to be a legacy to the bravery of Victorian citizens. Yes, it is. It's their story. This is not my story. This is, this is the story of ordinary Melbournians, ordinary Victorians who did extraordinary things. And, uh, I will, I will fix the, uh, the, the few issues that there are, and this will stand the test of time going in 10 years, 15 years, 20 years as a record of what they did and the courage that they showed through this time. Okay, um, ba, 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 ba. Djokovic probably would uh, love the doco. I would love for him to see it, but um, yeah, meh, we'll see. We'll see whether he does. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, thank you, Kaza. I appreciate that too. Uh, thank you, Karen. Yeah, people's denial of the truth, Olivia. Um, it can be staring them in the face, but goodness me, some people really... I, I really just, they just don't want to see it. Um, well, Davey, I can tell you for a fact, you're wrong about me. Don't know about the others. I can't vouch for them, but you're definitely wrong about me. So you might want to uh, check your sources there. Uh, but I did what I could. Mm. Knowing what I know now, I can do better. But that's life. You have to go through it to learn the lessons to be able to do better. So um, I did everything I could. That is true. That is true. Was it good enough? Well, my artistic heart says, says not really, but we can fix it. Um, ba -ba -ba. There is not enough darkness in the universe to dispel the light of one small candle. That is absolutely true. That is absolutely true. Um, the doco is about two years and what we've been through. It's not about Danny Drongo, but he is the cause. He's the villain. Think of Daniel Andrews as the villain of Battleground Melbourne and think of the people of Victoria as the hero right? The documentary makes perfect sense. Once you, once you understand who the villain is and who the hero is, uh, it all just kind of lines up for you. Uh, yep. The entire movie was about the people of Victoria, hundred percent, hundred percent. 
Uh, Mikoto, please send a message to the page. Japanese translator, I would love to to work with you on that. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Yes, lack of subtitles. Um, that is one of the things because of, look, shit went wrong. Okay, the last three weeks, last two weeks of my life especially have been really freaking intense. And one of the sacrifices that had to be made in the interest of actually meeting this deadline was subtitles. They will come. We will update this file. It will have subtitles and it will then have translations into multiple languages as well in due course. It was not possible for me to deliver on time and deliver the subtitles. I apologize. Uh, will I be allowed to go to jail if I'm not vaxxed? I'll probably end up in solitary confinement. I think that was part of um, part of Monica's issue was that she she um, she wouldn't take the PCR test, which n nor would I. Like screw them. I'm, I'm not I'm not playing that game. I'd, I'd probably prefer solitary confinement to be honest. Um, so I think that was um, I think that was it. Uh, Tanya, please stop apologizing. Okay, that's it, guys. I'm drawing a line underneath that. You've all heard me. Um, audio stuff. I've talked lots about it. It's done. Finished. Put it to one side. Um, just watched many tears shed watching what we've lived through these last few years. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Pamela. Yes, I feel the same way. Um, yeah. Uh, Jay, this is a, a perfectly valid counterpoint, okay? So I was making the point before about people that make their focus tearing down other people. Uh, the focus of this film is tearing down Daniel Andrews. You're quite correct. Making myself subservient to or a subset of the effectiveness of the premier of a state who has exercised dictatorial control over six and a half million lives would seem to be a slightly more valuable exercise than making myself a subset of the effectiveness of some guy who makes documentaries. Right. So there's a there's a, a, a difference in the comparison there. One of these people is literally controlling the lives of six and a half million people. So there's that. Uh, Ange, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, the post credit. Yes. Uh, yes. I'm glad. I'm glad some people stayed for, for the very end. Uh, like watching my year in review. Hard to watch, to be honest. Yeah. Hopefully the sequel has a happy ending. I I'll drink to that. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Jasmina. I appreciate that. Uh, Judy, it was my first feature. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Um, and I am proud of it. I am proud of it. The problems that remain are problems that can be easily fixed. And there will be somewhere on one platform or another, like I said, YouTube's going to stay the way it is. There will be a version that is in 4K because that's what we mastered it in. But the YouTube Premiere function only supports 1080p, so it's a lower resolution. So be it. Um, but there will be a, a, a version in 4K with the corrected audio. Uh, and again, for those that are joining me a little bit late, this is I'm not blaming my team. That's on me. We're going to fix that. All right. Part two. End of 2022. Battle is not over. More Melbournians are rising up and new battles will be fought. It's it's literally, it, it's, 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 this is kind of the silver lining of what's happened in the last two years is that people are becoming politically aware at a level that I have never seen before in my life. And I would argue has probably never happened before in Victorian history, with the possible exception of 1854, 1856, I don't remember the year, the Eureka Stockade, right? That would possibly, arguably, be the only other time in history where so many people have been so politically engaged as they are right now. That's the silver lining. That's absolutely. Uh, was it deliberate to not talk much about the shrine? I don't know about not talking much about the shrine, mate. We we featured it like three different protests. So like you literally have me on camera talking about it. Um, I'm not not quite sure what you mean there. Uh, Charmaine, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, how can we help with the court case? I listen, this is another thing that has suffered over the last uh, couple of months. I have given no thought to my court case at all. I'm in court on the 19th. What is the date today? The 13th. So I'm in court sometime early next week. Um, I have a meeting with my lawyer at two o'clock tomorrow afternoon and I'll figure out what the hell's going on then. Uh, I don't really care. What happens to me kind of feels very irrelevant. It's it's this weird kind of thing. I, I don't really care. Like I'm standing for what I believe to be right. I'm not going to change what I do or who I am. They will do to me whatever they're going to do to me. So be it. Um, thank you, Carl. I appreciate that. Uh, Lee, I appreciate that. Uh, Ali, um, I'm sorry, you, you must not have got the memo. The, uh, the premiere has already happened, but if you go back 
Uh, and if you just go to my channel, Topher Field, you will see it and um, and you, you'll be able to watch it there. Um, Andrew Hawley, uh, the updates you mentioned are excellent. The film is still brilliant. Thank you. Uh, but we will do the updates. Absolutely. Donna, I'm glad to hear that. Watching this has motivated me more. Uh, that is that is what I hoped for. What I one of the things that I was really really conscious of, and when we when we filmed this, so so here's a little bit of behind the scenes. Right, I'm making a documentary about real life events, but those real life events are still unfolding. Right, we didn't know when I filmed when I was doing the, all those interviews, we didn't know what was going to happen with the legislation. We didn't know. In fact, it was while I was in studio filming that the protest, the police stopped beating the crap out of everyone. That happened while I was in, that's how long ago it was that I was in studio. And now I'm trying to piece together a documentary and make it feel relevant and up to date on the very night when people watch it. Right now, obviously I couldn't include Novak Djokovic. That's much too, too recent. Everything was locked in by then. Uh, but I could at least go as far as the vote on the legislation in December. And that was where I drew the line and said, okay, I've got to stop telling the story at this point because the story is going to keep going. It's going to keep going potentially for a couple of years, hopefully not nearly as bad as those those two years were. But the, the, the story, the aftermath of what's been done is going to take some time to play out. So my my desire was to motivate people, to give people hope and not a naive kind of, idealistic oh well it'll all work out in the end no 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 that's that's not real but a really grounded kind of we can do this kind of hope if if you get the difference right one is is external it's something something it'll work itself out somehow the other is internal i'm going to do something about this i am going to change the world me and the other people that i work with are going to change the world. And that's really what I, I hoped for and what I wanted people to feel out of this. So so thank you, Donna. I appreciate that comment. Um, it stops when we all say no, 100% it does. And Shazza, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm just going to scroll to the bottom of the comments again because I've missed a lot. And then I'll scroll back a tiny little bit uh, and see. Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, goodness, guys. I cannot. Oh, how many thousands of comments are there on this? This is, I'm still scrolling. I'm literally, okay, there we go. Oh, oh there we go. Okay. All right, I'm at the bottom. I'll scroll back a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah, so while a lot of that footage wasn't so shocking for most of us, a lot of us have seen bits and pieces of that before. Absolutely, we have. Um, but I think it's really important to arrange it in a way that tells a story. And that's really what my job is. Um, a, a documentary maker, a filmmaker, a communicator, which is what I consider myself to be, right? I'm, I'm a political commentator and communicator. That's that's how I would label myself. My job is to arrange information in a way that becomes more memorable, more impactful, and more easily understood. Um, and that's what I was trying to do with this. So absolutely, you know, anyone that's been paying attention to this, you would have seen a lot of that footage already. But now it's been arranged into a narrative, into a story that has a beginning, a middle, and an end. You can follow it through. It has a hero. It has a villain. It, it ticks all the boxes for what a story, in the traditional sense of, of a story, of what that needs to be. Um, and hopefully what that's going to do is allow that to travel around the world a lot, a lot further, reach a lot more people, and have a much greater impact. Uh, we all have a part to play. 100% we do. And think about it. Think about this, right? Okay, I get to sit here and make this documentary. But I couldn't do that if it weren't for all of the people that have been showing up to the protests, that have been filming and recording. And it's not just the Rukshans and the Arvies, right? Obviously, they they are very recognizable. They feature heavily in the documentary. As a result of that, we use lots of their footage. Of course we do. But there's footage from, I think, I think in the end, there's about 25 different footage sources. Now, some of them we were able to identify, and they're in the credits. Some of them we weren't able to identify who was the actual original source, uh, and some of them didn't want to be credited, okay? So there's kind of those three different categories there. So there's only, I think, a dozen or, or maybe 18 or so in the credits, but I think it was 25 or more different sources for footage. Now, those people played their part. They showed up to these events. They showed up to these protests. They brought a camera with them. They took those risks. Some of them have a hell of a lot more guts than I do. Right, the, the the positions they put themselves in, the footage they get, they stand their ground when shit's going down, and they get this incredible footage. And a project like this wouldn't be possible without people like that. So you're absolutely spot on, uh, Nihal. The, we all have a part to play, and this is my part. Right, is is bringing it together and turning it into a story, bringing all those disparate bits and turning that into a story. Um, 
Which is what Kate says. Watching this brought the last two years all together. We've endured so much. A very powerful viewing. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, I've seen you out at every protest. Tofa, none of you created an awesome doco. You've also worked alongside us all. Not every. I have taken a few sabbaticals away from the front lines for my own mental health um, because sometimes it does get a bit too much. And I would encourage everyone to do that if that's if that's you. Take, give yourself some space. Give yourself some time. Uh, there are people, and here's the other thing with me. I'm not a frontline kind of person, and I own that. I'm not. I'm not going to shy away from. I'm not the guy who's in the front line. Um, there are other people who their temperament, their psychology, whatever their courage, whatever it is, allows them to be right there in that front line. That ain't me. Uh, I'm three rows back, right? And you'll see that if you watch my live stream from protests, you'll see that. Okay, so there is a huge amount of credit that belongs to the people that are the front line people that are the ones. Uh, that are actually willing to really go sort of toe to toe, and a huge amount of credit belongs to them. Uh, and I don't, I'm, you know, I'm, I want to acknowledge the fact that that's not me. I'm not one of those people. Um, but I have been to a number of protests, and um, but a lot of other people have too. And the hero in this story is not me. The hero in this story is the people of Melbourne, uh, the people of Victoria. Let's not forget that a lot of regional people were coming into Melbourne to support our protests that we had, and holding protests in their own local areas as well. Speaking of which, I will be in Albury on Sunday morning. Speaking in Albury, at the uh, the event being held in Albury on Sunday morning, I don't actually have details with me off the top of my head because it seems like a long way away. It's like three whole days away, um, so I'll get the details. I will post it on my Facebook page though. So if you want to if you want to catch up, uh, I'd be very very happy to meet you and shake your hand and say hi. Uh, Albury on Sunday morning, I will be there. Okay, uh, I'm going to scroll down again. Heaps and heaps and heaps of comments and stuff. Um, ba, ba, ba. yeah, lots of trolls. Please keep coming. Please keep coming, trolls. Please keep going. Um, ba, ba, ba. Uh, thank you, Atticus. This is this is one I, I, I want to mention the team a little bit here because the team have been flipping incredible. And I did, I've got all the credits up here, and I, I the They've been absolutely amazing. So you'll notice there's a very particular thing about those interviews that it's happening more and more recently, but it's only a relatively recent development in documentaries. And that is every single person being interviewed was looking at you down the camera, right? Now, if you've watched a lot of documentaries, you'll know that normally they're looking off to the side. They're looking like this and they're talking to an interviewer. They're talking to the documentary maker and they're talking like this away from the lens of the camera. In this documentary, they were talking to you. They were looking exactly into your eyes. Now, that was an idea that came from my director of photography, who's someone who has asked to remain uncredited, so I can't say their name. But this, I want to illustrate this point because this is what I mean when I talk about the incredible team that came together, right? That studio was my idea. That set with the brick wall was my idea, right? I couldn't find the right location. I had an, a carpenter, EJ, thank you so much for your work, came in, built that out of, it's literally made out of foam and paint and perspex and timber right? It is not a real brick wall at all. It then got lit by my director of photography, who had this amazing idea and, and a way to have all of my interviewees looking down a camera. Now, the reason why they don't normally do that is because most people get really nervous on camera. And if you ask them, hey, look down the lens of this camera and just talk to the camera like a normal person, they don't talk like a normal person. They talk like a weirdo. They talk like a robot. They get really uncomfortable. It's not a natural thing to do. So what we did and this was genius from my director of photography, what we did was we put a teleprompter in front of their camera. And onto that teleprompter screen, we didn't put text, we put me. So I had a camera pointing at my face and the image from that camera was on the teleprompter. So that when they looked at the teleprompter and they made eye contact with me, they were looking directly down the lens and making eye contact with you. And that's one of the things that makes those images so incredibly engaging, is that they're not looking off to the side over here like this. They're actually looking at you. And that's that's just, you know, there are so many examples I could give of where my team came in with ideas and, and thoughts and suggestions that just just made this what it is. Uh, and, and once we just refine a few things, it is absolutely going to be outstanding. Um, Artemis, um, I'm not going to apologize for making you cry. I was trying to make people cry. I was trying to make people laugh and trying to make people cry. So if I did those things, then then I succeeded. Um, the trolls are sad that I'm not featuring their comments. Yeah, they'll just have to be sad. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. 
Um, well, I did. I did feature the anti five G stuff in some of the articles that we showed on the screen. And yes, I do remember uh, the whole five G thing. I was there at the very first protest. There were plenty of anti five G people there. This is one of the interesting things about all of this, right? I got told after I spoke at the Anzac Day protest in 2020 where I got an avalanche of hate, more hate than I've ever had previously or since in my life. One of the things that people said to me, oh, was, oh you've lost all your credibility now. There you were, and there was someone with an anti-5G sign, and there was someone else with this, and there was someone else, oh, you've burned yourself now. You're never, your credibility is never going to recover. And then thousands more people found me through that and, and jumped onto my page or onto my email list or onto my YouTube channel or wherever else it may be. And then I went on to speak and, um, you know, at other protests. And at those protests, there were signs about forced vaccinations and mandatory vaccinations before it had become law, right? And people said, oh, you're in with those mandatory vaccination nutters. That's never going to happen. You know, you've burnt yourself now. You've destroyed your reputation. No one's ever going to take you seriously again because you're hanging around with these forced vaccination nut jobs. Well, of course, forced vaccination is now, or mandatory vaccination is now very much a reality. Those conspiracy theories most definitely came true. But also, thousands more people found me and started to support my work and started to, to say, hey, we, we love your work. We appreciate what you say. We appreciate what you do. Time and time again over the last two years, uh, who, who was it that has the quote, uh, rumors of my death are greatly exaggerated? Um, that's been a little bit of my experience over the last two years, rumors of my death. Uh, my loss of credibility, the end of my time as a political commentator, uh, those rumors have been greatly exaggerated. You know, more recently, it's people coming out saying, oh, you're hanging out with all those right-wing nut jobs. You do know there are proud boys at the protests, don't you? You do know there are neo-Nazis at the protests, don't you? Well, personally, I've never seen them there, but apparently there's footage of them there. Okay, great. So there's a handful of people that someone else might find unsavory. I tend to judge people based on what I find when I meet them. I don't tend to judge them by labels. So I'll make my judgment call on those people when I actually meet them someday. I haven't met them yet, right? And, and here again, people are saying, oh, no, you've burnt yourself. And even relatives of mine are like, oh, no, you're hanging out with those people. Oh, you're, you're oh, goodness me. Come on. You know, can we, can we have a, a more reasonable discourse than that? Surely. Um, yeah, there are people with some weird ideas. Stop expecting people that put themselves at risk for the sake of others to be normal. Stop expecting outliers to be normal. By definition, the people who show up to protests are outliers. If you look at the bell curve of normal in the middle of the bell curve and then outliers one way, outliers another way, right? The people showing up to protests, they're not in the middle of the bell curve. They're at one end or they're at the other. That's just by, that's human nature. It's just reality. Stop expecting them to be, you know, exactly mainstream, normal, fitting in with your idea of what some default human being should be. And keep in mind as well how often the conspiracy theorists have turned out to be right, right? I rejected the idea that this virus was man-made. I rejected the idea that it came out of the lab in Wuhan. I, it, just, it was a needless, senseless conspiracy theory that was just noise. And it turned out to be right. And I was wrong. And the conspiracy theorists were right. The arrival of vaccine mandates, the conspiracy theorists were right. The fact that the vaccines actually aren't particularly effective, despite the claims that were made early on, the conspiracy theorists were right. Now, they were wrong about 5G, okay? And I will happily, I look, if you're a 5G person and you can't handle the fact that I'm not a 5G person, you're welcome to leave my page. That's fine. You're welcome to stay as well, okay? I'm happy to have that argument, okay? I'm not saying you have to leave, but I'm not going to change my mind. I've looked at it. It's ridiculous. Go away. So, but, but understand how often the conspiracy theorists have actually proven to be right. And ask yourself whether you've been right as much as what they have. Because I can tell you, I know some conspiracy theorists who have been right more often than I have over the last two years. And that's freaking scary. When the tinfoil hat wearers have a better record of predicting the future than what you do as a political commentator, shit's getting weird. Right? So hold on to your hat. Just, just, yeah, hold on to your hat. Um, I do have some plans for future footage. We'll see what comes. We'll see what comes. I don't know. We'll, uh, yeah, not sure. Not sure. Um, okay, Topher Field, you've inspired me to create a Facebook page here in the New South Wales Mid-North Coast, specifically designed to educate people in how they can vote out the incumbent 
uh, the National Party and vote in minor parties. Yeah, fantastic. That's exactly what's needed. We've got to don't don't please don't vote for Daniel Andrews in Victoria, but also please don't vote for the Liberal Party. They've been fucking useless. They've been worse than useless. They've been there are minor parties that have stood for freedom and against the madness, against all the mandates, against the lockdowns, etc., consistently since the beginning of this. Let's find them and let's, excuse me, let's support them. Me personally, uh, I'm now a financial member of the Liberal Democratic Party, not to be confused with the Liberal Party, not the same guys. The Liberal Democratic Party, that's David Limbrick, who you saw in the documentary, as well as Tim Quilty. These are two MPs for that party, uh, and they've been fantastic. Let's support people like that. And let's make sure that in the coming federal election, which is only a couple of months away, it's going to creep up on us really, really quickly. Let's make sure that the numbers clearly show that those minor parties have achieved their highest voting totals ever in the history of Australia. And that is going to put the wind up Daniel Andrews here in Victoria because he's going to election in November, right? And if we can make sure the federal election is ugly for the incumbent and for the major parties, then we can make sure that he has some things to think about in the lead up to the, the Victorian election. Um, thank you. Not just a, a Victorian problem, definitely not. Uh, thank you, Catherine. Um, Hamish, um, Battleground Australia, I don't know that I would because I'd be afraid that it would be too derivative. It'd be too much a case of, oh, well, that worked. Let me just do another one, only expand it to Australia. And that's disrespectful. Like, you know, we've all seen sequels that are just derivative. Um, and my artistic sort of flair wouldn't, mm, yuck. So I do want to do more work in the future, but I'm not clear yet on exactly what that's going to look like and what that's going to be. Uh, I am tossing up the idea of actually, um, and I, I, I said this on my slow chat last week, and I realized I shouldn't have said the word because it can get you flagged, uh, but Ivy, the medication, Ivy, if I can call it that. Um, you know, what about a documentary, Battleground Ivy? Uh, and actually talking about what did we know and when did we know it when it comes to Ivy and its effectiveness and how it could have saved so many lives and how it would have made the uh, the vaccines, et cetera, quite redundant. Uh, to me, that would be a little bit more interesting, but other people are already doing good work in that area. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing next. I don't know. Um, thank you. Uh, yes, the trolls out in force. It's always a great, it's always a great watch. Always a great watch to see the trolls. Uh, powerful watch. Well done. Thank you. Um, yeah, seeing the chronology of events. You know, when you're going through it, you don't often think of how far we've fallen as a city. It's the, it's the boiling, um, what do they call it? The boiling crab. You know, we've lived it day by day. To actually then see someone lay it out, you go, whoa, whoa, hang on. And and that's exactly what I'm hoping this this does for a lot of other people. Uh, 100% Lisa. Uh, Lisa, Liza, Lisa, Lisa, not sure. Apologies. Uh, thanks to the other 12, 25 film footage sources. <laughs> what I've done here would not be possible without some incredibly courageous people. Um, and, and yeah, huge thank you to all of them. All this started with 70 so-called tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorists. Yeah. And I'm happy to say I was one of them. Trafalgar, April 25th, 2020. Uh, me and a couple of other tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorists. And you know what? Yeah. A few of them were 5G weirdos. And some of them are like the whole sovereign citizen thing, which I've told my backstory on a previous slow chat. Yes, I've been a part of that world. Yes, I get it. I completely understand it. But in the end, it's the people with guns that win. So let's not get too excited about what's written on a piece of paper, because if the person who wears a gun on their hip and gets paid to throw you in a cage is going to throw you in a cage, regardless of what the piece of paper says, then maybe we should be a little bit more concerned about that. Anyway, that's a whole other big story. Yes, there were lots of all sorts of really interesting people there. Uh, and hence the predictions that my career was over. I'd completely destroyed my credibility, blah, blah, blah. And fast forward two years, and here we are. We've had, we've successfully staged some of the biggest political protests in Australian history, right? Bigger than the Vietnam War. Bigger than anything else you can mention. Anything else you can name. Bigger than that. And we've had that here in Australia now, actually in support of freedom and in opposition to governments having too much control and too much power over our lives. I think that's a pretty phenomenal achievement. 
Uh, watching from South Australia, I was in tears. Thank you for this. Uh, you're an artist. Artists are never happy with their work. You're quite right. Uh, but that's what makes it so good. Uh, be gentle on you. Listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have some more scotch. And after this, I'm going to sign off and have a cigar and have a think. And then tomorrow, I'm going to get to work and uh, and fix what needs to be fixed until the point where I can at least live with it. I mean, there's there's a difference between being a perfectionist and having something that you can live with. And at the moment, I and again, no insult to anyone else involved. It's on me. I'm the director. It's on me. But I'm not happy with that. Not yet. We're close and we will get there. But I'm not happy with that. I'm not happy with my work and we'll fix it. Uh, okay, amazing balls with some of those protests. Hell yes. You'll notice you never saw a picture of me right in the very front. <laughs> those people who've got balls that I don't have. <laughs> um, the audio was terrible. Yes, I'm sorry. But that's what we're fixing. Um, Donna, I didn't realize how hectic it was for my fellow Australians down south with this footage. You're the champions. Stay strong. Keep the docos coming. Well, look, I'm, I'm only going to make a doco if there's a story to tell, if there's something to say. I'm not just going to make it for the sake of it. Um, <clears throat> but... Uh, yes, I, I do plan to do more work in, in the future. Um, the mental health and the suicide toll was artfully and beautifully handled with a lot of respect to, the, to those Victorians respected most. Well, affected most. Thank you, Jade. I, I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, 100%. So so amazing people. Matt Lawson, you, you see in the doco. Will Twig, I'm actually not sure that I know what he looks like. No disrespect to him, um, but I don't think I've come across him before. Uh, Fanos Panayidis, you'll see in the doco as well. And there's so many others as well. Um, there's just, there's literally too many to put in, right? And I tried to sort of, it just, you know, there were different, but you saw different people at the protest with megaphones or speaking. You saw different people, even if their audio wasn't audible, you saw them uh, in those contexts. And um, yeah, um, I, th it's there is no one hero. There are so many people that have contributed in such amazing and special ways to this. Uh, Topher, why don't you head the protests? I've seen you get the crowd fired up. You would do it well. Um, because there's no need, there are amazing people that are organizing protests and, and doing that work already. And I, I think it comes back to what, what someone said earlier, kind of each of us doing our own thing. Um, my thing, yep, public speaking, well, communicating in general, communicating communicating in protests, communicating in slow chats, communicating in uh, documentaries, communicating. That's my thing. I'm a communicator. I'm not an administrator. I'm not an organizer. I'm not, <laughs> trust me, I am not gifted in that area. Um, and so there are other people that are better at the administration side of things, better at organizing, who may not want to have that public profile, may not, you know, maybe holding a microphone standing in front of 100,000 people is the most terrifying thing they ever thought of. Well, they do what they're gifted at and I do what I'm gifted at and together we, we create amazing moments like what we've had here in Melbourne. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Good. Emma, I'm glad to hear that. You feel more empowered. Um, yeah. That's, that is excellent. Thank you to everyone that put themselves out there, 100%. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, thank you, Michelle. Um, okay. <laughs> Am I really seeing more T-shirts? Uh, look, there are T-shirts available. Uh, thank you to everyone that does support my work by, by picking up a T-shirt or two. I'm wearing one now. It's on the front. It says, um, I risked everything and all I got was this lousy T-shirt. And on the back, it has the Battleground Melbourne logo. Um, but... Let me um, let me just drop a link into the chat. If you're interested, please. If you're not, then don't. All right. Uh, there's no expectation. There's no pressure. I'm not I'm not going to sit here and hard sell. Um, but if you like what I do, and if you'd like me to be able to keep doing more of it, let me just drop a link into the comments here, uh, and that should show up very very shortly. And that is to some amazing guys in Horsham in Victoria that make all of my merch, all of my shirts. The, the shirts are from overseas. Let me be really transparent about that. The shirts are not Australian made. The prices on those were just too high, unfortunately. Uh, so the shirts do come from overseas, but they're blank and they get printed by a team in Horsham in Victoria. Uh, and then they handle all the shipping, all the customer service, everything else. They do a great job with that. Uh, so I've just dropped that link now into the comments. And uh, if you're interested, please go ahead. I've got, I've got my good people break bad laws shirt. I've got Don't Make Me Repeat Myself, which is a history. It's a quote from history. Uh, don't Make Me re Repeat Myself, um, etc. So there's a bunch of different stuff there. Um, yeah, have a look in, in the comments. I've just put the link in the comments there. <clears throat> uh, Fiona, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard. Choking back tears and anger. It, I, I feel you. I hear you. Uh, 
early on before I found Tofa, Cap how looked at real workshop and said it uh, Jared uh, Rennick, I think. Uh, know your rights, etc. I saw the order at the shrine and I thought the world the world had gone mad. It was not Australia. Yeah. It was not Australia. Um <laughs> not including a brief clip of Mashton Kutcher and get on the beers. Uh, look, I honestly, I debated. Do you remember the light show that went along with the get on the beers thing? Someone did a light show, a Christmas light show. And it was like, as much as I hate the whole get on the beers thing, and I am no fan of Daniel Andrews, I've got to tip my hat to that guy who made a light show set to the song of oh, this sort of, I don't know, disco dance mix of get on the beers. That was phenomenal. And I need, I, I, there was a part of me that was tempted to include it, but you know what, in order to get this down to a hundred minutes or 106 minutes, I think it ended up being, uh, which was my target was a hundred minutes. I had to cut out so many things and there are such amazing things that were said. I interviewed 22 different people and ended up with 22 hours of interview which I then had to cut down to less than one hour to then be able to put back in all of the news footage and the B-roll footage and the footage from protests and everything else, right? There is, there's 21 hours of unused interview. Now, some of that's dead space, right? Not all of that's actually usable, but there's probably a solid six or seven or eight hours of interview that I just haven't been able to use because I'm trying to deliver a feature film, not war and peace. People aren't going to sit for six hours. Um, and the story, you know, was it Mark Twain, I think, used to quip uh, when he when he wrote letters. He would say, I'm sorry for writing such a, a long letter. I didn't have time to write a short one. Sometimes making something short is actually harder than, than making it long. Um, so cutting it down to below an hour, there's a lot of stuff there that I can use. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of stuff like the Mashton Kutcher Get on the Beers track, which is hilarious, um, <coughs> that I just couldn't... Um, I couldn't justify bringing in given everything else that I'd already had to cut out. Uh, it would have been great to have Mark Ian uh, playing Advanced Australia Fair on his violin. That was one of the options. So, so because I was making a documentary about history that was unfolding as I was making it, and I didn't know how it was going to end. As I was filming, I was planning four different endings. Four, depending on whether the legislation passed or whether it didn't. And one of them was Markian on his violin playing the Australian National Anthem on the Steps of Parliament, the way that he did so beautifully with Michael from Cafe Locked Out. Um, that was a phenomenal, incredible, spine-tingling moment. And that was one of my four alternative endings that I shot and planned. Sorry, I'm claiming too much credit. I didn't shoot that one. That was other people who shot that one. But one of the four that I had either shot and or planned based on the footage that was out there. That's a more correct way to say that. And in the end, I felt that that was too melancholy. It was beautiful. I mean, it was heart achingly beautiful. But as a way to end the documentary and to not have people walking away and slashing their wrists, it was just too melancholy. And Events had moved on since then. I mean, he did that prior to the, the bill being passed. And when the bill got passed, we saw this amazing sort of movement spreading out through all through country towns, the Cafe Locked Out Boys, Damien and Michael, as well as others heading out there to support those uh, people protesting at, at uh, police headquarters, at Channel 7, at Government House, um, the Cafe Locked Out Boys again doing things at the Salvation Army, etc. Like watching this amazing spread of the protests and the, and the way that people once again were not defeated, but simply changed strategy, changed plans, changed tack. That for me became the real story and, and that became the ending. And that's what you saw was, was the ending in, in that fashion. So it would have been great in the end. I couldn't, I couldn't um, make it fit. Um, Topher, I have to admit, I'm one of the 100,000 that left Victoria in July 2021 after watching Battleground Melbourne makes me want to return and fight. Well, mate, you can still fight from where you are. You can still fight for us from where you are. You can still uh, be involved in helping to spread Battleground Melbourne and other content from all of the other amazing content creators. Um, you can still be involved. You can still be talking to the, your friends from down here, the people that you knew. Make sure they've seen this. Make sure that they are fired up. Um, you know, this is this is something that you can still do from wherever you are. Uh, thank you, Tover. It was heart-wrenching, but so necessary. Looking forward to meeting you on Sunday in Albury. I will be there. 
and I will see you there. Uh, I might have to get someone else to drive me because I'm going to be exhausted by the time I've done all of the media stuff I've got to do tomorrow and on Saturday, uh, but I will be there. Just scrolling down to the bottom again, there's been another couple of hundred comments while I've been I've been talking about the um, answering the ones that I I had in front of me there. Goodness me, hundreds and hundreds of guys. Thank you so much. The, look, being here for the premiere, uh, as imperfect as it was, I, I'm so grateful to all of you. So grateful. Uh, oh, 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 that's a good one. Where is that one gone? Yes, Barbara. There we go. Uh, is the song "Lions" available for purchase? So. Lions was made, written, and performed by Mandy Rag, W R A G G. And you need to look her up because, wow. I mean, well, I mean, you know, right? You've just seen, you've just heard one of her songs. I don't believe it's quite gone up yet. I, there's a, there's some sort of, I don't understand the music world. There's some sort of process involved there. And it took a little while for us to get the artwork to her for her to then upload. And now we're waiting for it to go through some process. She hasn't sent me a link at this moment in time, um, but it will be. So I, I would highly recommend look up Mandy Rag, M-A-N-D-Y-W-R-A-G-G, the song Lions. And if you find her on social media and what have you, and you follow her, then no doubt once that's available, um, then she will post that. Uh, because honestly, what a what a fantastic song and what a credit! Like the, the the amazing thing for me is Mandy and also Jack Jones, who wrote "Rise Up," the credit song at the end. Okay, both of them. I took the same approach with both of them, and that was this: I told them what their song needed to do within the story. Right? I said, "This is the moment in the story where I want to use your song, and this is what I want your song to do." And I gave them both a reference. In the case of Mandy, the reference was Evanescence, right? Uh, in the case of Jack Jones the, and Rise Up, the reference was a, a link that I sent to him. And then I walked away because I'm not a musician. What the hell do I know about writing songs, right? So I tell them, listen, I need a song that achieves this outcome for me for the documentary. And then I walked away. And both of them, Mandy and Jack, or Erwin Thomas is his real name, but Jack Jones is how he's known from the Southern Sons. Um, they came back to me with these just phenomenal, phenomenal works of art. And like, this has just been the beautiful thing about this whole project is time and time again, these, you know, the, the people that I've brought onto the team have then delivered and over delivered in just such a, a fantastic way. And I really feel like once we iron out the kinks, um, this documentary is greater than the sum of its parts. I think it's it, it, it has just come together so well. F like, this is not a credit to me, right? This is way, way beyond what I can do. This is a credit to the way that this team came together and everyone lent their talents and their expertise and, and their speciality to it. And, and this is the result. I, I'm, I'm incredibly proud of it. In spite of the issues that we had today, I'm incredibly proud of it. And we are definitely going to fix those issues and have a version released that I can just say I'm proud of that with no disclaimers, no qualifiers, just that. I'm proud of that. Uh, yeah. Uh, Owen Thomas, Rise Up, written by Jack Jones and uh, Reggie Bowman, 100%. Uh, and thank you for, for your work, mate. That was an absolutely amazing, amazing song. Um, Jess asked, do we need to crowdfund for your court case? That's very kind, Jess, but no. Um, you know, I'm not wanting to... It gets complicated once money gets involved, like crowdfunding for a documentary. Okay, you guys have given me financial support to deliver a very clear outcome, a very clear deliverable. And I will work my ass off until that deliverable is delivered. And at that point, we're good, right? I've met my obligations and I'm almost there. Another week, remaster the audio and I'll be there. I will have delivered the thing that you guys crowdfunded and authorized me and, and gave me the budget to deliver. Court cases and raising money for court cases, no disrespect to anyone that's done it or will do it in the future, but mm, if I was going to the high court, I'd have to. I'd have no choice, right? At that point, yeah, I, I have to. For something like this, you know what? I'm just going to fund it out of my own pocket. Um, we'll see what happens. We'll see what comes. And if there's an appeal or there's other sort of big dollar proceedings that come out of that, well, maybe at that point, but for this first stage, look, I'm just going to pay for it. I knew, I knew the risk that I was taking, right? I'm not an idiot. I knew I, knew I was going to end up being arrested. I knew I was going to end up being charged. What the Victoria police were doing was incredibly obvious and sooner or later they were going to come for me. Uh, and they did. 
So no, I'll, I'll fund this first round myself, and then we'll we'll just see where we end up after the. I think it's the nineteenth. I've got two court hearings. I think the nineteenth and the twenty first, and I don't know what the difference is. I'll find out tomorrow. I've got a meeting tomorrow with my lawyer, and I'll find it all. Find out everything then. Uh, Bobby, would you consider another doco about the relevance of social credit systems and possible microchipping? Not right at this moment in time. I am. I'm very concerned about a social credit system, and I would argue that vaccine passports are a social credit system. That's exactly what they are. Uh, you do this thing that society says is necessary and you become a good person. And if you don't, you're a bad person. It's a social credit system. That's what it already is. Um, right at this moment in time, that's not something that that I would feel that I'm the best person to tackle. Like if I'm going to do a project, it needs to be something that I believe I can bring genuine value to. Something that you could look at and say, well, yeah, okay, someone else could have done that documentary, but probably wouldn't have done it maybe not even as well, but, you know, that Topher brings a particular perspective that is valuable. Topher's involvement is valuable. And if that's not the case, then why am I involved, right? If other people can do just as good a job, then I should probably leave it to other people to do that and focus on the things where I can bring something unique. So that's a topic that I don't feel like I can really bring anything unique on uh, just at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Topher. It was powerful. Uh, gave hope. Reminded us of the greatness of United Melburnians. I can see Battleground 2.0 and 3.0. Will you release the director's cut? Uh, look, in a, in a very real sense, this is the director's cut. I've worked very, very closely with my team, and 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 the cut is what I what I chose. And I don't have a, a director's cut in mind. Um, as for a, a Battleground Melbourne 2.0 and 3.0, well, let's hope that that's not necessary. Let's hope that we never. Uh, need to make a 2.0 and 3.0. Um, yeah. Uh, Loz, don't don't waste your time with telling him they're dreaming. Uh, he's one of the trolls. He's hilarious. <laughs> um, <ba> -ba <laughs> <laughs> this epilogue is longer than war and peace. Can somebody stop him? Ah, piss off then. Go do whatever you want to do. Like, seriously. Ah, Andrew Bogart has posted your doc up. Excellent. Thank you, Steve, for letting me know that. I had no idea. Um, Lions on Spotify and YouTube, fantastic song in all facets. I, I don't know if you're telling me that they were already there on Spotify. I hope they are. Lions and um, Lions is on Spotify and YouTube. I, I hope it is. Um, but you know, like I said, go and follow Mandy Rag, W R A G G. And while you're there, go and follow Erwin Thomas. He wrote Rise Up, the credit song. Uh, and you may know his work from Southern Sons. Damn, what a voice! Seriously, go back and watch the credits. And listen to Jack Jones, Erwin Thomas, towards the end of Rise Up and the way he sings. Uh, it just, every single time, the hairs on the back of my neck just stand up. It's just amazing. Uh, thank you to all involved, indeed. Thank you to all involved. Um, okay. All right. So this seems to be a confirmation. Lions is now available on all music platforms, and there is a link there. So John McIlveen, thank you for posting that. Uh, it's also on Apple Music. There you go, everybody. You can find Lions online right now. Go and find it. Mandy Rag, W-R-A-G-G. -G. The song name is Lions. Download it. Let's make sure that her song absolutely blows up. And while you're there, let's do the same thing for Jack Jones, a.k.a. Urban Thomas, for the song Rise Up. Let's make sure that both of them go absolutely freaking nuts. Uh, where will I be at Albury Wodonga? I'll be there in Albury on Sunday morning. I will post the details in a post tomorrow or maybe on Saturday, depending on how crazy my days get in the next couple of days. So keep an eye on the Facebook page. Um, <laughs> can we settle this with a Call of Duty uh, one versus one? Snipers only. <laughs> if only the world's problems could be sorted out that way. Uh, I guess you'll be feeling the anticlimax in a few days. Yeah, the post-show kind of let down. Uh, look, it's really mixed feelings for me right now. I, I'm incredibly proud of what the team has done. I think it's an, it's an amazing achievement. This is my first feature project. Uh, but at the same time, because of me not giving my team as much time as they needed, it was less than perfect. So I've got this really kind of this maelstrom of emotions going on on the inside of me right now. Um, but uh, I'm going to work with the team because the team are amazing, right? They just needed more time than what I gave them. End of story. I'm going to give them that more time. We're going to remaster it. We're going to re-release it. And at that point, hopefully that'll eliminate all of the mixed feelings and I'll just be able to sit there and be proud of what we have done uh, together. And then maybe after that, I'll feel an anti-climax. But right now, I kind of feel like there's work to be done. Um, so, 
Uh, uh, I've missed it. Missed it. Started late. Uh, watching it late. Must watch it again. Yeah. So the link works now. You'll um, you'll just be able to enjoy that and watch it anytime you want to. Uh, yes, you can absolutely watch it right now. Um, Tofu, your name sounds like Gopher. Please explain. It's the second half of Christopher. So my dad's name is Christopher and my name is Christopher. So he got the first half and I got the second half. Uh, I'm not the first person to do it. Topher Grace, the actor, is very well known. Uh, it's not a new idea, but I just chose to do that because uh, otherwise my dad was going to be Chris Field and I was going to be Chris Field and that was just going to be confusing. Um, ba -ba -ba. All right, more trolls going through. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, the fight continues, my friend. Well done. Thank you. And to you as well. Uh, I absolutely love Rise Up. Is it available on Spotify? Well, Erwin Thomas was commenting earlier. So, Erwin, would you please do us the courtesy of answering that question for us um, and uh, letting us know where we can find that? Uh, are we going to see a video clip of Rise Up? Not out of the question. Not out of the question. Uh, this is something that's been in the back of my mind. I've been focused on the doco, but once the doco is done, do we perhaps do some music videos? Hmm, we'll see. Uh, done beats perfect any day of the week. Well done, Tova. It does. It does. But that doesn't scratch my little artistic wanker itch uh, that I just want everything to be perfect. Uh, not perfect. But there are some things we can improve. So let's do that. <clears throat> um, ba -ba -bum. Ba -ba -ba. Yeah, tell them they're dreaming. Tanya, Marshall, all the... All the, um, the, the <laughs> <laughs> uh, the trolls are in. Excellent. Uh, <laughs> thanks, guys. Aubrey Wodonga, uh, SITP and RTL ha are happy to announce Topher Field and Cafe I Looked Out will be guest speakers at the Aubrey SITP Sunday, 16th of January, 2022, 10 a.m. Australia Park. So there you go. There's the location. I just found out about it at the same time as you did. Uh, they have told me where it's going to be. I just haven't read it because I've been buried in the, in the docker. So there you go. Australia Park, 10 o'clock in the morning, on Sunday in Albury, if you would like to join us for that. Um, look, my guy can deliver on the mix. I appreciate the offer. I appreciate the offer. My guy can deliver on the mix. I just didn't give him enough, give him enough time to deliver on the mix. That's it. End of story. So once he's given that time that he needs, 100% he will. Uh, there was no clown on a piano. The piano was great if it had been mixed correctly. It was it was just too overpowering and took all the de the, the attention away from what was being said. So once it's mixed mixed correctly, you'll hear it differently. Uh, and the piano was chosen and designed very specifically to lead up to a punchline for a moment that would have got a laugh if everything had been done exactly the the way that was intended. So this is why, like, I I just get anal about this stuff. If it's done right, it creates a certain moment. Um, and everything's leading to that moment. Trust me, when you hear it done and mixed perfectly, then uh, then you'll understand. Um, do I? Do you think you'll release a director's cut? No, no. Uh, the not comply song is called Lions. We are the lions now. We are the lions. Uh, that is by Mandy Rag. W R A G G. Um, <laughs> Wayne was mistaken for Jack Jones in the late nineties once. That's a hell of a compliment, mate. Yeah. I, I hope you, I hope you really made the most of that. Uh, so glad <laughs> that he's part of this though. Uh, Wayne was a fan of Southern Suns. Look, I've got to say, um, Irwin, Jack Jones has been such a pleasure to get to know over the course of, I mean, we've literally, we've, we've had a couple of phone calls and we've messaged each other a few times and he's made that amazing song. Um, but. I, I kind of feel like I've got to know him and and he's one of the really amazing silver linings for me out of all of the madness that we've seen in Melbourne and in Victoria over the last two years has been the incredible people that I've met. And I count Erwin Thomas, Jack Jones among that number. And it's I'm I'm so honored to have to have met him and to have to have made him as a as a friend. Uh another question about a director's cut. Uh, I know that's uh, a repeat of the same question. Um, should be proud. You have delivered something that will make real change and awaken and inspire many more. I, I certainly hope so. Uh, certainly hope so. Uh, thank you, Bussy Boy. Uh, justice will always prevail. You know what? It doesn't always. Sometimes justice, you know, we, we have to work to actually get justice to be done. And that, in my opinion, is the phase that we're in right now. We've got work to do. Uh, 
We need to make sure that the coming elections, the federal election in a couple of months' time and the state election in Victoria in November, we have to make history with those. We have to completely change the the, the way that politics is played in this country and make sure that freedom-friendly minor parties pick up lower house seats. That's the game. That's the key. Uh, no, there won't be a director's cut. Um, thank you, Jared. I appreciate that. Uh, there will be a cost breakdown. This is a good question. So this was crowd funded. This was your money that has been used and has been spent on this documentary. Uh, obviously, there's a little bit more money to be spent to clean up some of the last work that needs to be done. Once that's done, I will be providing full transparency on how the money was used. In actual fact, we have spent in excess of that figure. Uh, now, that's okay because I've had some private donors that have come in and uh, they they donated towards the project not on the crowdfunder. So that figure there is the crowdfunder figure. Uh, there was actually more raised than that. And I'll be going through in a later slow chat. Certainly not this week, maybe not the coming week, probably the week after is about when I'm going to finally be able to sit down and do all of that. And there'll be full transparency around the numbers, where the money was spent, how it was used, how much is left to contribute towards the marketing and to keep on trying to make sure this documentary goes as far and as wide as possible. Uh, thank you for an amazing job with the documentary. It was phenomenal. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, Last time I checked, I had all of my body parts. So I think that means I'm 100%. Uh, what's that old the song? Leprosy. I'm not half the man I used to be. Sorry, it's late. I'm tired. I'm, my, my sense of humor goes downhill. Um, the Great Reset. I got banned from TikTok. Yeah, apparently TikTok is really harsh on the banning. I, I didn't know this, but apparently that happens now. They're, they're really, really harsh. Um Okay, now let me just get, once again scroll all the way to the bottom. Sorry to everyone whose comments I'm skipping over, but there's just so many hundreds of comments coming in. I just literally cannot even, I, there's no way, there's no way that I could keep up. Uh, Erwin is a wonderful person. Yes, he is. I think so. Um, ba -ba -ba. Thanks, private donors. Yes, thanks, private donors, indeed. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you, Laurie. Um, yeah, look, it's, there's different ways of doing things and, and is it possible to do something for less? Yes. Is it possible to do something of that quality for less in that amount of time? No. You know, there's that, there's that triangle. There's the art, the artist triangle, or really it's not the artist triangle. It's in everything. It's in business. It's in everything. I think, think of a triangle. And on one point you've got fast, then you've got cheap, and then you've got good, right? These are your three triangles and you can only ever pick two or your three points of the triangle, right? And you can go toward, you know, you can go over here and be be fast and cheap, okay? But it won't be good. It's going to be a long way away from being good. You can be good and fast, right? You can come over here on this side of the triangle and you can be good and fast, but it's not going to be cheap, right? You can't have all three at once. And uh, we were fast. We were trying to be good. And I've, I've again, my fault. It's not, it's not where I needed to be. It will be in another week. Um, and as a result, it's not cheap. Right, so so that's that's the reality there. But yeah, there'll be full disclosure of all the numbers, all that stuff. Um, ba -ba -ba. Where's my cigar? I'm inside today. Uh, I'm going to have a cigar after this. I've actually I bought myself a special cigar, Romeo and Juliet White Churchill. If anyone ever wants to buy me a cigar, buy me a Romeo and Juliet White Churchill. It's a genuine Cuban. Uh, it is genuinely my absolute favorite cigar of all time. And uh, I look forward to smoking that once we're finished up here tonight in just a couple of minutes. Way for Thin Entertainment, Monty Dean says, I'll be sharing this on my podcast. Thank you, Monty. I appreciate that. Uh, what an emotional roller coaster. Uh, reliving the last two years was incredibly emotional. Thank you for all the work. Well, thank you to all the people whose work I relied on to be able to tell that story. That's really, that's really who we should be thanking here. Uh, do a doco on when Daniel Andrews fell down the stairs and recalled every moment, in contrast, of course, to when he spent $44 million and couldn't remember how it happened. Uh, that's a great example, though, falling down the stairs. It's a great example of something that I just couldn't find time for. Like, there's so much that has happened that I can't actually tell the story of all of the things. You know, Daniel Andrews falling down the stairs, whether it's true, whether it's not, whatever, there just wasn't time to even touch it. It's gone. You look at the documentary, it's gone. It's not even in there. And there's so many things that I've just had to just leave on the cutting room floor. And it's annoying and I hate it. And I wish that I could do a six hour epic, uh, but no one would watch it. So whatever. <clears throat> Anything worth doing well is worth failing at in the process of learning. Well, that's where I consider myself to be right now. I, I, I got to 90% 
and I stumbled on the last 10% and I'm going to fix it. And I'm going to deliver that last 10% and then I'll take all of those lessons into the next project and the next project, hopefully I'll be able to deliver at 95%, 96%, 97% and there'll be less uh, that, that is uh, falling short. So um, yeah, that's, I, I agree. I agree. Um, Asmodian, I appreciate that, that, Attitude. I appreciate that approach. Who cares how you spent the money? I gave it to you to do the doco. The risk was mine and I was willing to take it for the cause. Uh, I appreciate you taking that approach. Um, my approach is that I am the custodian of that money. You didn't give it to me. You gave it to the project. And it is my responsibility to deliver and my responsibility to be accountable. And I find that that really pays dividends in the long run. Why do people trust me now? Well, it's because of previous projects that I've done. Uh, an anecdote, <clears throat> I had a chap reach out to me a little while ago. I'd mentioned on a slow chat that my laptop was failing. And um, he reached out to me, he said, listen, I've got, I'm willing to give you $10,000 towards a new video editing laptop and some new equipment and camera gear and so forth. And I wrote back to him and I said, look, 10 grand is more than I need. I don't need 10 grand, um, but six grand to be able to put into a really top end uh, video editing laptop and replace uh, to get a GoPro so that I'm not streaming from my phone all the time. Um, six grand would cover all of that and it would be amazing because my laptop's old, it's dying. The new laptop would be, you know, would last me for five years. It'd be a five year investment into what I do. Um, and, you know, he offered me 10 and I said, okay, I, I won't take 10, but I'll take six. And he sent me a message afterwards. He says, it didn't go unnoticed that you didn't take all the money you could have right? I, I noticed that. And life went on. And then when I announced the crowdfunder for Battleground Melbourne, that same individual was one of the ones who came in and actually did a private donation, not on the crowdfunding platform, but a private donation, which more than made up for, made up for, I mean, not that he owed me anything, right? He had nothing to make up for, but was more than that four grand difference. And so by being transparent and by being honest and by having integrity around money and, and people that want to support my work, I reaped a massive benefit on the other end of that. And so that's why, even though I appreciate the approach that you're taking, it is my choice and my decision that I'm going to be trying to be as transparent as I can possibly be around what happens with that money to earn your trust and everyone else's trust so that the next time I decide that there's something that, that needs to be done, I can put the call out and say, this is something that I believe in. This is something that I need you you to help me do. And people will continue to trust me and continue to help me do that. So um, yeah, I, I appreciate that attitude, but I'll be I'll be releasing all the, the numbers anyway. Great job, Tofi. You did great. Be proud. Thank you, Anita. I'm incredibly proud of the team. I am, incred I, I am proud of what I did, but actually what I did was only this much of it. The team did really the, the work and then all the people that filmed everything in advance for us to then take. They're the ones that did so much of the work and I, I am very, very proud, um, but we can make it better, just a little bit better. Uh, the future is Getter. I am on Getter, apparently. My social media team have told me that I'm on Getter now. I don't even know what Getter is. I don't know, I'm old, I'm old. Don't make me keep up with social media as it all changes. <laughs> um, yes, thank you to everyone that supported it, 100%. Uh, will I continue to attend protests? I will continue to attend events from time to time. I'm not at every single protest by any stretch of the imagination. Not that I ever really was at every protest. Um, you know, I'm, I'm in Albury on Sunday supporting an event up there and I will continue to support events. I'm on, I'm doing an event with the Liberal Democrats on, I think it's Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. Like I will continue to be out there and, and trying to, um, trying to, to make a difference in whatever way I can. Uh, thank you. Uh, Isabel, 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 not sure how to pronounce that. Um, I appreciate, once again, I appreciate that attitude, but I think I need to actually, I, for my sake, I need to I need to put the numbers on the table and show everybody. Wow, that was hard to watch, but amazing, Topher. Thank you to you, your team, and all the contributors. I live in Queensland, and like many, have watched what I'm following, Vic. We need more truth givers. Hang on, it's all of us from here on. Yeah, we all need to get in the trenches together, uh, and more people are doing that. More people are doing that, and it's it's very exciting to see. Um, okay. So <laughs> Mark, oh, I love this. How much did you make off the t-shirts wrought? So, so sorry, I have a question for you. When Kmart sell t-shirts, is that a wrought? 
when when anyone sells like is every single t-shirt company rorting people somehow it's not a rort it's a product and i'm very open about the fact that i have my t-shirts in order to try and help to pay for myself and my team and what i do and to make money off that newsflash everybody when someone sells you a t-shirt they make a profit I know, right? You didn't know that. But thanks to people like Mark, who are calling out fraudsters and rorters like me, now you know. And just as a thank you to Mark for uh, drawing that to everybody's attention, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put back into the comments the link to my t-shirts, which you will find on a uh, website called AussieBot. So that should have dropped in now on both YouTube and on uh, Facebook. So uh, <laughs> Sheldon says, please don't give the uh, the trolls airtime. But it's so much fun. So much fun giving them airtime. Um, so yes, I have just dropped back into the comments the link to buy my t-shirts just to make the trolls angry. All right. Uh, we love you, Mark. We do. We do. Uh, sleep well after all your hard work. You know what? I am going to sleep very well. Uh, oh, here we go. I'd rather get a t-shirt for my money. Uh, where was that comment? There we go. So Barbara says, hey, Mark, I have four of them and they are amazing quality. Nobody rorts me, buddy. Well, thank you, Barbara. I appreciate the support. And I've had a lot of very positive feedback about the quality of the t-shirts, the quality of the printing. Uh, the guys at Aussie Bot in Horsham, Victoria, do a really good job with the printing and really good job with the customer service. So uh, if you would like to support me, you know what? Just to, just to piss them off. Just to, let me drop it in again. Here you go. Here's the link. Here's the link to my t-shirts, everybody. Coming up in just a moment. It's just having a think about it. There you go. It should be in your comments right now. So guys, I'm going to call it a night. Tonight's premiere, for me, mixed feelings. I didn't give my team as much time as they needed, and it showed in the, that music mix. We're going to fix it. We're going to move on. The YouTube one is going to stay the same. So that link, if you could just be sharing that far and wide, push that out there, get that to try and go global. Yes, I know the music mix is not ideal, uh, but it's the one that's now been viewed however many tens of thousands of times, and we need that to go around the world if we can. I will put up on Getter, on Rumble, on Vimeo, on all the other platforms, I will put up a remastered version that has those few things fixed, uh, and then that will be where people can go if they if they want to. Now, also, for those that were expecting um, subtitles or expecting captions, my apologies. I, I'm not going to give you a sob story over the last couple of weeks of my life, but it's been knocking futs. Okay, and unfortunately, those captions were one of the things that fell off my list of things that were just humanly possible for me to get done. Uh, it is on my list of things to get done as quickly as possible. We will get them up there. We will make sure that they're there. Yes, I care. I care about the fact that there are people who aren't able to hear and need closed captions. We will get that done. Once that's done, we will then move on to getting uh, subtitles in foreign languages as well, uh, languages other than English. So if, the, if you are bilingual, and I mean like native bilingual, I mean really freaking good, and you are willing to put the time in to do a really good translation for me, that would be much appreciated. Please reach out to the Topher Field Facebook page uh, and, and my team will get in touch with you to organize that. So that's what lays ahead. Um, the premiere was fantastic, uh, but there's work to be done. So I'm going to do that work. That's going to occupy me for the next week or so, plus some media appearances, showing up in Albury, showing up for the Liberal Democrats next week sometime. I don't even know when. Uh, and doing a little bit more of that sort of stuff. Hopefully by the end of next week, I will have the documentary genuinely completely finished, signed off, draw a line underneath it and say that that's done. That's a piece of work that is done. Uh, and I can be proud of and it can sit in my portfolio forever. And it's then that I'll begin to really ask myself the question of what's next. Uh, and that could get interesting. That could get fun. There are a few intriguing possibilities in that regard. But we'll talk more about that later. Thank you all so much for being a part of the premiere. Thank you for joining me for the director's Q&A from Battleground Melbourne. I keep an eye on all of my social channels as we progress this week to perfect what is a good documentary, but not perfect. Let's perfect that. Let's get that out. Let's make sure the world sees it. Uh, and then we're going to move on and do some more exciting things in 2022. Thanks, guys.